Hey, let's have a little tea time with tea. Let's have a little conversation. Come on by. I got plenty of time to talk about this because I know my own family history. I know the history of my own neighborhood. So I clearly understand this. Hunter Biden, text of sleeping in car smoking crack. Hmm, yeah. Those of us who were brought up in what was politely referred to as the inner city. This don't surprise us. This doesn't make us clutch pearls. Oh my goodness. He was sleeping in a car, strung out, on crack. It doesn't surprise us. Because if you grew up during the crack epidemic in the inner city, it was not unheard of to walk past a car and see someone passed out with a pipe in their hand. It wasn't unheard of to actually see someone in a car and you're staring close enough trying to figure out, are they breathing? Are they, are they still alive? You'd put your, if the window was rolled all the way up, you kind of put your ear against it, trying to see here. Are they snoring? Are they breathing? Are they alive? Or you'd bang on the window and see if they'd move. Hey, Kibby. This is not surprising to those of us who grew up in the inner city during the crack epidemic. Mm -mm. No, no, it was not unusual to find someone unalived in a car because they OD'd, they overdosed, or they got sick and they aspirated on their own bodily fluids. It's not surprising. And I invite my fellow Americans to understand the same thing is happening with fentanyl today, okay? There should be plenty of y'all out there who know someone or have talked to someone who knows someone who lost a family member due to fentanyl, okay? An OD, an overdose. So this right here in his trial that he texts someone that he was sleeping in his car doing crack doesn't amaze me, doesn't frighten me. Because some of you, if you're out there complaining about fentanyl and the drug problem in this country, then you understand that this goes back decades. Okay? Decades. I want my fellow Americans to get their big girl and boy pants, pull them up, and go, oh, no, wait a minute. So he just happens to be the son of Joe Biden. I know the son or daughter of Frank or Linda or Donna or Shaquana who did the exact same thing. It's nothing new. We don't understand this shit's not new. Plenty of people have lost husbands, wives, sons, daughters, nephews, nieces in that same scenario. The only difference is he's not in a pine box. That's it. For my fellow Americans, I want you to understand the only thing special about this one is he's not in a pine box. Okay? I mean, story time. My mom had a mild heart attack. My uncle, who was strung out on crack, drove his car to a lot near our house. It was February in Cleveland, Ohio, which means it was 10 to five, five to 10 fucking degrees out there. 
there was about two, three inches of snow. Now, we all knew he was a crackhead, so we were told, nope, you don't let him in the house no matter what. I don't care if, if he got to pee, give him a bucket and hand it out the back door, because he is a crackhead. Okay? My mom's in the hospital, and I told her that he pulled up his car outside in the lot. She was real quiet. She's in the hospital. Recovering from having a mild heart attack. She got real quiet on the phone and she said, open the window and holler out there and tell him to come to the phone. I was like, what? She said, and I want you to make up the spare bed for him. I want you to lock my bedroom door where her money, where any medication she was on were. Lock it up. Take the key with you to your room. Fix him something to eat. All of this she told me to do for her brother, the crackhead, okay, who was curled up out in a car in February in 5 to 10 degree weather. I opened up the window. I shouted out there. And the last little bit of gas that he had in the car, he had started up the car to keep warm. He opened the door and I said, mom wants to talk to you. He turned off the car. He came in. I gave him the phone. I don't know what she said to him, but that grown 45 year old man was standing there crying, weeping. On the phone. And all I kept hearing him say over and over again was, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I promise to do better. Thank you. I promise to do better. He handed me the phone. She said, There's some, some men's corduroys in a, in a bag and, and a flannel shirt. Run him a hot bath. Give him those clothes. And make up make up the bed for him and everything. Fix him something to eat. Matter of fact, she told me to fix him oatmeal. Fix him some hot oatmeal. Because that's all he should be able to get, keep on his stomach. Because all he's been doing is crack cocaine on a binge. Give him hot oatmeal. I fixed it. I gave it to him. That man laid in that bed and slept for three days. Three days straight through. My uncle brought my mom home from the hospital. She was doing much better, pretty stable and everything. But that man slept for three days. I kept sticking my head in there to make sure his ass is still alive. Coming down off of drugs. And his so-called buddies, the other crackheads, are calling the house. And my mother saying, nope, don't know where he is. Click, don't know where he is. Nope. Ain't heard from him. Don't know. One of them apparently drove by and saw the piece of car still sitting in the lot. And come to my, are you sure you don't know where he is? Because his car is in the lot right now. She was like, really? Oh my goodness. I didn't even notice that. Do you know where he is? She played that shit off because her brother was a crackhead. Because he was going to, he would have died out there in that damn car. Five to ten degrees. Snow. He would have fucking died. They would have come by, opened up the car, and he would have been dead. That could have very easily happened to Hunter Biden. Because he said, and he texts, sleeping in a car smoking crack. What if he gotten sick? What if he vomited and aspirated? That's that close. And I want my fellow Americans to fucking understand. It's the same thing with fentanyl. It is the same fucking thing with fentanyl. We have Americans losing their family members. <coughs> this shit is dangerous. <coughs> but my fellow Americans are failing to understand that's what he went through. For all of y'all talking about, oh, he got that job at um at um 
at that foreign company. It was given to him. Y'all are choosing to ignore the fact the man served in the military. You're choosing to forget he was on the board of directors of Amtrak. <clears throat> that was a paying job. Okay? Yeah, Burisma. Joe Biden gave him that job at Burisma. No, the fuck he didn't. The man had jobs before that. But what y'all looking at is, we hate Joe Biden. Not that this is a grown-ass man. I want y'all to understand this. I want y'all to understand his ex-wife. His ex-wife testified. Yeah, he was a drug addict. He was a drug addict. There are alcohol addicts. There are drug addicts all over this country. All over this country. But y'all don't want to pay attention. Y'all don't want to understand how detrimental that is to a family. As I said, my uncle would have been dead if my mother had decided to leave him in that car outside in February. Yeah. Name it, you can be, yes, name it and you can be addicted to it. But drugs and alcohol will devastate a family. It will devastate a family. The same folks talking about fentanyl don't understand how many Americans have let their child or their husband back into the house and then they steal from them. Then they take their shit and run away with it and take more drugs and OD. Why do you... Narcan is a new fucking thing. Literally. They had to create a life-saving drug to stop people from OD. Narcan didn't exist in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. We literally had to create a drug to try to save addicts. Yet yeah, Hunter Biden... That man goes to jail, fine. He fucking goes to jail. He needs it. Okay? Drugs will destroy a family. You can't pull them back. They got to pull themselves back. They have to make that fucking decision themselves that I have to stop. That I don't want to wind up six feet under. He's not six feet under. There's the number one good thing about it. He's not still strung out on drugs. There's the second good thing. He's living his life right now, and he's admitting his part, his entire part in tearing up that part of his life. That's three. Alcohol, drugs, some people is sex. Well, hey, you do you. But the ones that seriously kill people, that unalive people, are drugs. And if you push them hard enough, once they've gotten themselves to a certain level, what are you going to do? Push them right back to it? Are you going to push them right back to it? Our Congress... Ran around waving a laptop. Hunter Biden's laptop. Hunter Biden's laptop. Thank you. For what? What was on it? Proof that he was an addict? Yeah, absolutely. Proof that he was a womanizer? Absolutely. But what does that have to do with our government? Could you imagine people out here whose kids are strung out? on fentanyl, and they try to get their life back together, and then the Congress decides they're going to hold a hearing. They're going to hold a hearing about somebody's kid who was strung out on drugs, someone's son or daughter who's strung out on drugs. I don't know about y'all, but I would be asking, what business is this of yours? 
They're not in government office. They have not been elected into any office. So why do you keep bringing this up? Someone help me out with that. It makes no sense. It boggles my freaking mind. It literally makes no freaking sense. For two years, Hunter Biden's laptop, Hunter Biden, so what? What If it wasn't the laptop, what was it going to be? Hunter Biden's cell phone? My God, it, it, we have a drug problem in this country. No one's making people take drugs. I want that to be crystal clear. No one's dr throwing someone down and forcing them to take it. They're going, here. Hey, here. This will make you feel good. And some of my fellow Americans are going, yeah, I want to feel good. I want to feel better. The stress of everyday life and not having the job I want, not being able to do what I want. I'll take some. That's it. At right or left, I want you to understand that is what it comes down to. I feel bad. I need something to make me feel good. So I'm going to take this. There's always the opportunity to go, nope. I know it's hard. I know I'm having a really bad day. I know my job's not what I want. I know I got laid off. I know I lost that opportunity. But I don't want to take this to have that temporary feel good. I worked in a psych unit. I worked there, a young man. 19 years old, he went to college early. He, he went to college at 16. Brilliant mind, wonderful mathematician. Six months before graduation, he and his friends sit there and they, you know, a lazy Susan, they put some joints on it. Now, two of the joints had been dipped in wet. Y'all know what wet is. Wet is fucking formaldehyde. That's what they put in bodies. The other three were regular joints. They spin it, you take a hit. They spin it, you take a hit. He took the wrong hit. He literally seized and two of his friends had to do CPR to bring him back. When he woke up, he had the mind of a three-year-old child. Brilliant child, mathematician, -tician. he had a job lined up at NASA, okay? Those of y'all from Ohio know we have a NAS NASA in, in Ohio. He was scheduled to start a fucking job as soon as he retired, as soon as he graduated. Oh, you never heard that? You never heard of wet? Wet is formaldehyde. Only they call it that because they dip it in cigarettes or cigars or joints. All it took was one hit. Because nothing else was damaged except his mind, his brain. They brought him to the psych unit. He's literally walking in circles. His parents walked in spoke to him, and he continued to walk in circles and drool. His mother literally hit her knees. And her husband's trying to hold her up because he was an ambassador. He worked for the, the government ambassador wing as assisting ambassadors in different countries. She literally hit her knees and... They came over to the window and they like, when is he going to get better? And the doctor literally told them, never. You need to start planning for long-term care for him, a nursing home. 
this is not coming back. That mind is now gone. Okay? And his mother, I will never forget his mother kept repeating, but 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 he but he but he's he, he he's graduating early and, and he's got a job lined up at NASA. You don't understand. In the engineering department, they needed a good mathematician and he beat out other people with much more experience. He's supposed to start and she just kept saying it over and over again. And the psychiatrist said, that's over. That life has ended. He is not going to be able to do that anymore. What could I say? We had coffee. Then I, I made a cup of coffee for them. And she kept telling him to come sit down. And he kept walking around and around in circles. But if they go and guide him to a chair and sit him down, he'd sit there and just rock back and forth. And eventually he'd stand up and start. All it took was one fucking mistake. One celebration with his friends. One time for them to play that little Russian roulette game and spin it around. His friends came and visited him one time. One time. And they were talking and talking about movies and talking about sports and talking about all this. And they kept talking, about, yeah, you remember this? Hey, hey, Mike, Mike, you know, we, 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 um, we still got the tickets to that game. We'll trade them in and, you know, we'll get new ones for us to go. And he's just rocking and looking. And it started out up here with his friends talking and then it started getting quieter and quieter and quieter because it was beginning to click in these young men's head. Our friend is gone. And finally, one of them again came over to the window and said, um, how, how can they fix him? And the nurse went and took them in a corner and explained to them, there's no way to fix him. The friend that you knew the happy-go-lucky, the laugh, all it took was one hit. He's not coming back. And one of them piped up and said, we're supposed to graduate in June. And the nurse looked at him and he said, that's not going to happen now, right? No, it's not going to happen. You guys are going to graduate. He's going to a nursing home. And he's not even 19 years old yet. He's going to spend the rest of his life in full care in a nursing home because of one hit, one wrong hit, and his life is done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Nah, nah. That's why I say. When people talk about Hunter Biden being a drug addict, guess what? He's not six feet under. He's not sitting in a nursing home with someone feeding, feeding him applesauce. So when Marjorie Taylor Greene or anybody else, Jordan, starts flapping their gums about Hunter Biden, guess what? He's still alive. He's not six feet under. He didn't kill anybody. He didn't unalive anybody. Understand how many addicts did that. How many alcoholics? Mad. Y'all remember um, Moms Against Drunk Driving? That didn't just come out of nowhere. That was mothers getting pissed off about alcoholics unaliving kids. That's where it came from. Do you hear about it anymore? Because it was effective. Fentanyl. We keep talking about it and talking about it, but God damn. Where are my fellow Americans to gather together and say, listen, we need to focus on prevention. By now, we should have it so organized that if 10 tons of, of drugs came across whatever border, 
we would have enough common sense to go, uh-uh, no, not doing that, uh-uh, no, 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 we're not doing that. We've seen the results. We've seen the, what, what it caused. But we're not doing it. Oh, it's, 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 it's Mexico. No, it's Americans. And the problems we have putting our lives on the line. He, ha he has decent loving parents that were there until he came. Exactly. Exactly. Now you you could you you could you could go to YouTube, Google fentanyl addicts, Google videos of fentanyl addicts. There are literally people parked in cars taking hits, and their children are in the back seat, and they're dead. They are done. They have OD. Something's wrong with our country. That parents are willing to endanger their children like that. Oh, yes, he was very lucky. They didn't coddle him. Y'all y'all know Robert Downey Jr.? Y'all know Robert, the actor Robert Downey Jr. Strung out on crack cocaine and alcohol. His parents and his wife said no more. His wife literally locked the door and said, you can't come here no more. His father said, I am not going to bail you out. No, if you got to sit in jail and go through OD, that's what you're going to do. He was not sent off to some um, exclusive drug rehab place. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. You're going you gonna to come through it. Um. No, baby. You're going to come through it in jail. Joe Biden said, I will help you if I can, but I'm not going to help you to be an addict. Yeah. Now that I can respect. I love you. Tell me how I can help you. Other than me supporting you money-wise by seeing to it that you get drugs. Where's the rest of my American, my Americans? You know your daughter is strung out. You know your son is strung out. You know they're hanging with people who are strung out. You should be at every fucking court. Your Honor, they're addicts. I want my grandkids. I want my grandkids. I don't trust them with them because they are in danger with them. I want y'all to understand, during the height of the crack epidemic, in my neighborhood, in the BIPOC community, those kids were taken from the parents and given to the grandparents. Now, mind you, those grandparents may be 60, 70 years old, then already lived their life, then already raised their kids, but they wanted the kids before they wound up in social services. They wanted the kids before they wind up being unalived from hanging out with drug dealers and a parent who's strung out. Why are we hearing so much about people ODing in cars and their kids are with them? Why, why the fuck is that happening? Why is no one saying, hey, you know what? We're not going to allow you to keep them kids because you're being endangered. You're, in a, you're a danger to these kids. We cannot allow that. My fellow Americans are fucking up and not realizing this simple, basic truth. Stop acting like I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. Dem Demo rats. Stop that shit. We're Americans. And Americans are being unalived by way of drugs. By way of drugs. We're failing. Ain't nobody out here doing it to us. 
Ain't nobody in Mexico doing it to us. Because pay strict attention. Mexico just voted a, a woman president. Mexico just voted in a female president. Why haven't we? Mexico has made abortion and a woman's right to bodily autonomy legal. Why haven't we? Why do we have shriveled up old ass men running around here telling women what to do with their body? Telling husbands and wives what they can do with their body? Why are there states about to make a, about to make birth control illegal? You're about to make birth control illegal and abortion illegal. So, you know, no matter what, you, you gonna, you're going to have that little chitlin. We want you to give birth. Wait, are you going to help me feed it? Are you going to help me with housing? Are you going to help me with education? Oh, fuck no, that's all on you. But everything else, we want to have control. We want to have control of your body. We want to have control of the medication that you put into your body. But once that little chitlin drops out, it's on you. Matter of fact, we'll put your butt in jail if you can't afford to feed it. If you can't afford to house it. If you can't afford to clothe it. We'll put you in jail for abuse. But help you? Oh, no, 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 no. Fuck no. Uh, no, we, we ain't going to do that. Hell no. <sighs> God darn it. It ain't gonna be long. It ain't gonna be long. And let's let's let let's talk about religion. You wanna tell somebody what clothing is inappropriate. Can't be sleeveless. Can't be form fitting. Hairstyle has to be clean and neat. No no beards below the ear. Sideburns cannot extend below the earlobe. Men are expected to be clean shaven. Beards are not acceptable. Earrings and other body piercings are not acceptable. Shoes should be worn at all times. You want to tell me, wait, J Jesus had long hair. He had a beard. He was barefoot. He wore robes. But you're going to tell everybody else how they, got to act, how they got to act, how they got to dress. Someone make that make sense. Because I'm looking at it going, wait a minute. Jesus wore a robe, a.k.a. a dress. He had long hair. A beard. But, oh, no, no, no. Not supposed to do that. Make this shit make sense. Religion is the root of all evil, as far as I'm concerned. Y'all remember this? Y'all remember the chanting? Lock her up. You know, it's a pronoun. Her, he, them, they. Pronouns. Yeah. But now, lock him up. Oh, no, 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 no. We can't say that. All you did was exchange her for him. 2016 for 2024. 2016, it was all good. You were chanting that with your whole chest. Lock her up. Now, lock him up. Oh, no, it's terrible. You can't do such thing. You can't. Oh, my God, you hate him. So you hated her in 2016, 2024, you say the same thing, and oh my goodness, it's so wrong. You can't possibly do such a thing. Hey. Oh. Yeah, right. We are in a very dangerous path. We have people who want to point fingers, not solve fucking problems. 
We have people who want to act as if, oh, well, I didn't mean it that way. Yes, you did. You meant it exactly that way. I'm wearing myself out a bit, but hell, it's the truth. And here y'all go. Not going to have this trial till October. Or well after, after the election. <laughs> they lost their mind because he was held to the same standards as anyone else. I am not above the law. You guys are not above the law. And Trump is not above the law. That's the way it should be. But unfortunately, we have weak-minded folks who don't understand. Everyone should be held accountable. Everyone. That's what our founding fathers intended. That's what the creators of this country intended. So those running around claiming to be patriots, you apparently don't understand. A rich man is not supposed to do more than you're able to do legally. But you don't want to understand that. You don't want to hear that shit. Hmm. Anywho. Just a little conversation. Just a little tea time with you. Y'all have a good evening. Be well, everybody. Take care. Remember, trust the tea, not the Kool-Aid. <sighs> Keep in mind, there's that old saying, there but for the grace. Hunter Biden could be six feet under. He could have had an accident where he unalived his child while on that crap. Yeah. Y'all have a good night. Be well, everyone. Moderators, thank you so much. You keep us on an even keel. Y'all have a good night. Be well. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. <laughs>